presented by Church Tech U, it's the ProPresenter Show. On today's show, how to use macros in ProPresenter 7.6 and newer. Hi, and welcome again to the ProPresenter Show. This is the show where I teach you all about ProPresenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. And if you're excited about not having to put in actions one at a time once you've constructed a macro, go ahead and uh, click the thumbs up button and uh, leave a comment, if you will. So this is something that I love about Renewed Vision is they're responsive to ideas that the community comes up with. Now, it could be that they already had this idea, but a few months ago, I started to see people go, man, I love actions, but boy, is it a lot of work to put in the same actions at the beginning of every song, and then a different set of actions at the beginning of announcement time, and then a different set of actions for the sermon, etc. If only I had like a preset of those actions. Well, that's what a macro is. So let's head over to my computer and I'll show you where the macros are and how to use them. So here we are in Pro 7. If you're in uh, an earlier version than 7.6, then you will need 7.6 for this to work. Uh, and you'll know that because you'll have this little M down here. So if you haven't updated since before July of 2021, then you don't have that. So make sure that you, you update in order to have that. So let me get rid of my video down here, and you'll see that I've created a couple of macros already. So in order to create a macro, you click on the little plus button, again, having highlighted macros here. So we click that, and now I can give that a name. So let's say I want to call this service reset. And what I want to do is I want to reset a timer and I want to make sure that I'm on the appropriate stage display layout. So I'm going to right click, add action, go to timer. Uh, let's do this one and let's set it not to start, but to reset and that's good to go now let's add another action by right clicking add action and go to stage and then i want to make sure that this stage display changes to uh, the current next stacked music layout okay so now at right before church starts i can go ahead and click on that and it will do those actions. But I don't have to click on it. I could have it automatically show up on a slide. So let's say that I had a pre-service loop. Let's say that's this. I could just drag it there and it will automatically show up. Notice the color here is the same as the color here. So I need to right click and if I wanted to have it show up a little bit better uh, let's give it a nice annoying orange color and you'll notice that that did update here so that's how I can tell which macro is which uh, based on the color of the little M icon here the one thing that I just showed you by the way is that these are pointers so any change I make here will change all the macros that are on slides so don't think hey i will change it here and it won't affect the one that you've already put on the slide it will so that's important to know let's say though that you're in a situation where you like the stuff that's here but you want to add to it well you could right click you know, adding in just this instance, so add an action and then add whatever action you wanted to do. Let's say that um, I wanted to add a prop to it. Well, then I could do that and that would add that prop to this. But what if they're contradictory? So what if I had a macro that, um, let's say started a timer with five minutes and I 
instead of starting that same timer as a five minute timer, I actually wanted it to start as a six minute timer. What would happen if I added an action on that same slide to change that same timer to do something different? Well, ProPresenter assumes that if you have added an action to the slide with the macro, that you wanted that to change. So, um, and that would change only on this particular slide. It wouldn't change on any other slides that I'd added macros to as well. So that's kind of important. Uh, by the way, if you decide that you want to use macros a lot more than these other things, maybe you want to hold down command on the in a Mac or control in a Windows machine, and then you can just rearrange these things to put the most important ones wherever you want to. That's something that I forgot to say in the overview of, uh, of ProPresenter 7.6 that you can do as well, is change the order. Let's it's also the case that maybe you want a macro to start automatically. Well, there's two ways to do that. We can right click and we can uh, trigger on startup and that will automatically start when ProPresenter starts. So we've got the power icon here indicating it triggers on startup. So I can right click and uncheck that to delete that if I want to. I could also start it with the calendar. So if I go to, I think it's under view, and um, yeah, it is, calendar. Notice that I've already added one of these. You can set the appropriate date and time, have it repeat every week, whatever you want to do. But down here where it has actions, I could have a certain playlist start and so on or I could have a certain action start. So I could have the service reset action start right after service ends or at two o'clock, you know, and service ends at one or whatever, and do it that way. Of course, ProPresenter would have to be on for that to work. So if you shut down ProPresenter every time, maybe you want to do the uh, one where it, it starts when ProPresenter starts. So it's really up to you what you want to do. And by the way, these are not mutually exclusive. So I can have calendar or I could have starting it when it starts up or I could do both. And in that way, whichever circumstance happened, I'd be covered. So that's um, another cool thing about macros. Um, I don't know that I mentioned that I can uh, start a macro just by clicking on it, but I can. And that macro, you'll notice, has scrolling text, which we're going to talk about in the next lesson. Here, let me go ahead and um, clear that out. That was the message here that I want to clear out. So I've got that. One other thing that I do want to mention is, let's say that I had all three of these macros and I want to start them all at the same time. I could click one after another, but that's not all at the same time. What would be better is if I could make a macro of macros, but that's crazy talk. No one would, yeah, yeah, you can make a macro of macros. So if you click on the plus button and let's call this macroception like Inception, if you've seen that movie, which is a pretty good movie, then I can drag macros into this macro. So that macro's there, this macro is there. It's a little hard to see, but it is there. And so is this one. So I can then grab this macro, put it on the slide, and it'll do all three of those when I click on the slide, or I can just click on it and it will automatically do that. I can also uh, rearrange these macros if I want to, so I could have the most important one or the one I use the most at the top, etc. So that was just clicking, waiting a second, and then dragging. So 
that is all about macros in ProPresenter 7.6. If you like this content, I bet you'd like my Pro7 Quick Start course. So head on over to tdm.fyi slash pro7quick. Give me your name and email address so that I can send you the login information. So make sure you put in the email address correct or I can't send you the login information and uh, then you can take that class at your leisure. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchCheckU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.